Thank you very much, uh, Nishal. Before I start my presentation, uh, allow me to say a few words. Uh, good day, good evening, everyone. Thank you very much for joining us uh, in this webinar uh, entitled Sustainable Port Development in the Asia Oceania uh, Region. On behalf of IAPH, it's my pleasure to welcome all of you uh, from wherever you are tuning in. The maritime industry in general uh, and the port industry uh, in particular uh, is an integral part of the supply chain. Uh, in this regard, uh, questions have been asked about the sustainability of the port industry uh, due to the negative impacts uh, on the environment, especially uh, in the course of its operation. And uh, this is why uh, we, are, we are where we are today, uh, dealing with a lot of challenges uh, that we are facing on how to improve the efficiency of ports, uh, whether it's due to emissions, waste management, uh, energy consumption, or even the socioeconomic impact uh, on the well-being of our population, the general public. So I think this evening or this morning, uh, we, we, we are glad to have all of you with us. Uh, uh, as part of IAPH, uh, I think uh, the Asia Oceania region uh, faces a lot of challenges of its own, and we hope to we hope that this session will will be able to give you some information about the initiatives that are being carried out in this region, especially from the uh, esteemed panelists that we have uh, this today. So, without further ado, let me go straight to my uh, presentation. Okay, let me start off a slide on the uh, initiative in Malaysia about the uh, efforts that is being undertaken uh, by the ports and the maritime industry here. Uh, the ports are part of the uh, uh, transport uh, division in the country. And uh, as such, we are also part of the uh, national transport policy, which was uh, recently launched uh, in 2019 uh, for, for a 10 year period. So uh, in general, there are five policy trusts which uh, are earmarked towards uh, uh, developing the ports uh, in a sustainable manner. Uh, so the five, five trusts that we have related to ports are basically uh, to strengthen the governance to create a conducive environment for the uh, transport industry, uh, optimize, build and maintain transport infrastructure and services, uh, the third trust is to enhance safety, integration, connectivity, and accessibility. Uh, and fourth one is, of course, uh, the topic that we are uh, addressing today, uh, how to develop a, a green transport system. And lastly, uh, to expand the global footprint, promote internationalization of transport services. So each of these trusts are driven by uh, its own strategy. Uh, and of course, uh, some of them are the need for us to improve our regulatory framework within the country for us to uh, implement uh, the, the initiatives. Uh, secondly, we, we are also looking into implementing smarter and more efficient uh, use of existing infrastructure, uh, adopting a safe system that advocates uh, safer roads, rail, maritime, uh, infrastructure as well as vehicles and to strengthen transport infrastructure uh, inten and to intensify the use of digitalization. Uh, towards a green concept, uh, there is a move now to enforce compliance to acts and regulations and shift towards uh, uh, international requirements. And uh, this is where we need to accelerate the implementation of low carbon mobility initiatives. And uh, lastly, uh, create an environment that, is, uh, that facilitates uh, local transport industry to become global players. So generally there are uh, several initiatives that the government has undertaken, especially with the ports, 
Uh, firstly, is to improve the uh, infrastructure capacity building. Uh, generally, we're looking at green concepts to uh, to to actually construct uh, roads and rail uh, projects. Uh, in ports, we are looking at uh, warehouses and uh, office buildings, uh, which are able to use uh, alternative uh, power sources. And uh, generally for wharf and operational equipment, we are looking at uh, moving towards uh, use of uh, electricity uh, and also alternative fuels, which are uh, less damaging to the environment. In terms of digitalization, uh, we have a seamless uh, connection. We are looking at uh, using digitalization to improve the efficiency of the port. And also looking at uh, the issues of cybersecurity, the ports are today drive, driven on platforms, IT platforms that are very much an uh, uh, integral part of our operations. And this is uh, one of the areas that uh, I think is causing a lot of concern, not just uh, in Malaysia, but throughout the world. Uh, in terms of uh, moving towards a green environment, uh, we have implemented several waste management initiatives. Uh, one of them is the port reception facility on how to manage uh, waste from ships as well as waste that is generated from our port operations itself. Uh, for solar energy, uh, we are moving towards uh, adopting a larger area for, for generation of solar energy. Uh, warehouses which are currently designed will have to uh, have uh, specifications that will enable uh, such initiatives to be implemented. And for new projects, new wharf development, we're looking at uh, uh, even providing a ship to shore uh, power supply uh, to ensure that uh, emissions are cut down while ships are in port. Uh, in terms of uh, cooperation with the uh, regional partners, uh, of course, we are uh, very much in support of the work that's being done by IAPH. Uh, I think uh, Patrick will be speaking in detail about uh, the work that is uh, currently ongoing. We have got another forum uh, under APAC, which is the Asia Port Services Network, which is also a very uh, uh, interactive forum among the uh, members of APAC. Uh, a lot of work has been done recently in promoting uh, uh, green initiatives within ports. Uh, the, West, the WPSP program uh, is part of uh, uh, IAPH's uh, initiative, which I think Patrick will also be speaking later. Uh, on a global basis among ports, we have uh, the ports, uh, Port Authorities Roundtable. Uh, these are some 15 top ports of the world coming together to facilitate and exchange ideas and, and, and uh, learn from best practices uh, of each other. And uh, in our own region within ASEAN, we have the ASEAN Ports Association, uh, which we have a lot of uh, sessions, interactive sessions with uh, our member ports in the region. And this is where uh, we are able to uh, exchange, once again, exchange ideas, experiences, uh, as well as uh, issues and challenges uh, and learn from each other's experience. Uh, this slide generally just touches on the, uh, the problems that we have, not just uh, in Asia Pacific area, but uh, the whole world. Uh, if you look at uh, the Asia Oceania region, we are one of the largest contributors of uh, CO2 emission. But generally we look at the uh, uh, bottom left uh, chart where uh, it, it depicts the world carbon uh, dioxide emissions from 2009 to 2019. Uh, so it appears to be on an increasing trend, uh, especially even in all regions as well, Asia Pacific uh, being one of the biggest uh, contributors. So uh, it's, uh, it's, they are happy to note that uh, all 10 nations of ASEAN have uh, adopted uh, the uh, Paris Agreement. So I think the groundwork has been laid uh, for us to uh, work together. Uh, but this is where uh, we have to come together and see how as a region, how we are going to go forward. And uh, for Malaysia, we, we, we start uh, small, we start, start at the bottom. 
Uh, with the port authorities in Malaysia, we've got six port authorities. Uh, we've all come together uh, under a, a common uh, platform where we are working together on uh, looking at uh, implementing uh, initiatives uh, throughout the country. Uh, uniform initiatives uh, that can be implemented in all ports. Uh, we're working very closely with the terminal operators as well. Uh, we also have an ASEAN chapter within Malaysia uh, where we have um, all the six port authorities and another 16 uh, terminal operators uh, who are in the same forum. And at an ASEAN level, as I mentioned earlier, we have 10 countries uh, we, whom, whom we, are, we, are, we are talking to. So generally, uh, it's all about achieving common standards, common approach, having common goals, and uh, very importantly, having common legislations uh, and regulations as well. If you look at the European uh, implementation, I think the European Commission has uh, done a lot of good work which we, we could possibly emulate, sorry, which we could uh, possibly emulate. And um, they have got a common regulatory framework which is applicable throughout the member countries. Uh, there is a definite and binding uh, target for renewable energy which has been set very clearly. Uh, energy efficiency targets have been set and even emission reductions uh, among members has been set. So. These are sort of the approaches uh, that we can take within the region here. So there's a lot of work to be done uh, within the, within the uh, ASEAN region. And we hope uh, uh, on, on a, a larger scale, we are able to also work with the other countries within the uh, Asia Pacific region. So uh, that uh, in essence is uh, what we are doing here in Malaysia and uh, to a certain extent within ASEAN. Uh, and uh, we hope this has been uh, uh, a, a enlightening session for all of you. Thank you very much, uh, Nishal.